Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with a fun Stitches Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tips by Nancy Zeman. First, let's take a look at the technique we're featuring today. We'll be altering our McCall's 7871 knit dress pattern with Nancy's right size fitting techniques found in Nancy's Confident Sewing Collection book. We'll be using Pellon Easy Knit interfacing, pattern making paper, Clover's retractable tape measure, and our five in one sliding gauge. Fitting patterns is definitely a sewing basic made easy with Nancy Zeman's absolute easiest pattern fitting techniques. All the information we're talking about is in Nancy's Confident Sewing Collection book, including the handy measurement chart. It's the right size measurement chart. And this chart is specific to you. This is your personalized fitting chart. Okay. So you can uh, take a photocopy of this or write it in your notebook and with an ink pen, fill in your measurements. So we'll be taking the first measurement, which is that right size measurement. That's that one measurement it's the key to Nancy's fitting techniques. Okay. So you'll get your spring tape measure, your retractable tape measure, and we'll take that measurement. The front width measurement is the measurement between the arm creases. And you stand with your arms uh, at your side and you have your sewing buddy help you do the measuring. Or my sister. Or your sewing sister. And it's sort of like when we were in marching band in color guard. You <laughs> yes. kept keep keep your arms to your size when we're marching, and that crease just just naturally shows up. So take that measurement from arm crease to arm crease, and then refer to the chart at the bottom of the page. Okay. It tells us if your front width measurement is 12 inches, then you're going to cut out a size 12, and that's a size way smaller than you're used to cutting out. Mm -hmm. So we took your front width, width measurement, and that tells us to cut out a size 12 pattern. Because we cut out a size 12 pattern, we're assured that the neckline and the shoulders will fit you. Okay. So this dress pattern, uh, when you cut the 12, you, that's re basically telling us your um, shoulders and neck area is a size 12, and we can easily fit the other areas. We'll fit the bust line, the waistline, and the hip line by filling in some more uh, measurements. Uh -huh. And it tells you in the book, Nancy tells us how easy it is to measure. So we'll measure our bust line, our waistline, and our hip measurement. And our hip measurement is found nine inches below the waistline. So it's, it's always a question I get, where is the hip line? How mm -hmm. do I measure my hip line? It's about nine inches below uh, the waistline. Okay. So we've taken those measurements and we'll fill them in. We'll fill those measurements into your personal fitting chart. And in the first column, where it will be the pattern measurements. And the pattern measurements are found on the back of the envelope, on the pattern envelope. So it tells us a size 12, what the bust was designed for on the waist and the hip. Just fill that in. Okay. It also has the arm length and the arm width. So you can fill those pattern measurements in the first column. And then we fill your body measurements into the second column. We do a little bit of math, some subtracting, <laughs> and we find out that you need an increase in the bust line of four inches. Okay. So we take that four inch increase and divide it by four seams. Oh. This dress has four seams. Okay. The front and the back along the side seams. So that's it's two seams, but it's four edges. It's four pattern piece edges. Sure. So take that four inches, divide it by four, and it tells us we need a one inch increase on each side of the, the bust line of the pattern mm -hmm. on the front and back. The next is the waist. Well, this this uh, garment has a lot of ease in it. Mm -hmm. It's a loose fitting uh, dress. So that allows for no waist change for you. That's so all right. zero, <laughs> zero waist change. And then the hip, we're going to be increasing two inches. So we take that two inches, divide it by four seams, and we have one half inch. And then in the sleeve, we determined that you'll need two inches in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. So the sleeve has two seams, so we'll divide that two inches by two, and that's one inch per seam. Okay. And we'll start, we'll start with the sleeve pattern. I like to start altering the sleeve pattern to show Nancy's technique, mm -hmm. because it shows it uh, how easy it is. Uh, so start with a sleeve. Or you can go to stitchitsisters.com, and we have little practice pattern pieces. So you can find 
the miniature pattern pieces mm -hmm. and cut these out and you can try Nancy's pivot and slide method at home before trying it on your actual garment pattern. And that gives, it gives you the confidence to uh, go ahead and uh, change your pattern for your alterations. Mm -hmm. We're starting with the sleeve and we know that we need to increase your sleeve by uh, one inch on each side. But the first thing we do is lay down some pattern making paper. Okay. And we have a roll of pattern making paper and it's just a lightweight paper that we use for our alterations. But we're not cutting the pattern apart. We're not slashing and spreading. We're leaving the pattern intact. And that's a, one of the great uh, methods with Nancy's technique. So we've taken a black marker, just a black office marker, and we've traced all the way around that pattern piece, that sleeve pattern. And then we take a red marker. And we know that your sleeve increase needs to be increased on one inch on each side. Okay. That width is just a little bit uh, snug for you, so you want a little bit of breathing room. So we're going to set our five and one sliding gauge at one inch, and we're marking. We're marking at one inch. That's the increase we need to make. So okay. from the cut edge of the pattern, measure out one inch. Mm -hmm. Great. And we've placed a pin. We've placed a pin at the top of the sleeve cap. And this is where the pivoting comes in. Oh, okay. So we're pivoting. We're pivoting the pattern. So pivot to that increased mark and then trace. We're tracing around that sleeve cap. And then I trace down an inch or so. Okay. And then we pivot it to your side and we pivot it out to that one inch mark. Oh, keep coming. There you go. <laughs> and then you trace that sleeve cap. Once you've traced, and then down one inch. Right, about one inch. Okay. Sure. Once you've traced that, you can see that increase. You've increased that sleeve width, but the magic is you have not increased that seam line. Okay. That is the original edge of that sleeve, and there's no increase to that line. So we know this sleeve will fit into the size 12 bodice that we're, we cut out. That's a wonderful part of Nancy's technique. But we're not done with the sleeve yet. We need to pivot it back over, move our pin to the stitching line where the pattern would be okay. when you stitch your pattern together. This pattern uses 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So 5 eighths inch down and in, we put a little mark. And that's where you place your pin. The pin is always placed one step behind the alteration. Okay. So if we're increasing the edge of the sleeve, it needs to be at the cap. Now we move it and we pivot back in and we trace. And we trace all the way down to the bottom of that sleeve until it meets the original seam. And you can see the increase. And then you'll pivot out to your one inch line, mm -hmm. your original line and add your pin, pivot it back in, and then you trace, you trace down, <laughs> trace down to the original uh, lower arm, and that's our increase. And that shows how easily Nancy's pivot and slide method works. And you'll be working on a flat table <laughs> and you'll have a little bit straighter lines than we have today. But we'll take this away because We've altered the sleeve, now we need to alter the front pattern. So this front is for our McCall's 7871 knit dress. Mm -hmm. And it has super interesting pockets that are set into the front. It, it features a welt pocket opening inside of an inset. So we have a triangle inset and a welt pocket that would be going into this. So if we take this away, that doesn't look like our traditional shape for a front bodice no, or it a front dress pattern. So the secret is to place that side inset, tape it in place. So we're using source fix-it tape and we're just taping. We're actually basting it in with some tape. So source fix-it tape, thank you. You're welcome. Source fix-it tape and just tape that temporarily into place. Now that more resembles a traditional front bodice piece or a front dress pattern piece. And for your alteration, we know 
that we need to add one inch here. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the same thing. We'll set our 5-1 sliding gauge at one inch and you place a mark. And we also need know that you need a hip increase mm -hmm. of a half inch. So we'll begin by pivoting. So we'll place that pin one intersection behind where the alteration is needed. We'll pivot that pattern to your hip alteration. Okay. And we didn't do a waist alteration, but you can see when we draw the line to that hip, that naturally increases the waist as well. So okay. sometimes the hip measurement, the waist increase would naturally, depending on the size of the, the type of the pattern, mm -hmm. the style of the pattern, will naturally make that area bigger. And it's it works great with this design because it's a loose fitting dress right. or tunic. And then you do the same thing. We pivot it back and then we draw the line to the hemline. Okay. And that's our side alteration. The seam line and the arm's eye and the side seam are the same length. Okay. We haven't changed the length of it, but we've changed the shape and we've increased. The next thing we need to do is trace the insert. This is the side insert. So we'll remove this pattern, the main bodice, and we'll place this on our new line. And then we'll trace. So if we keep this handy nearby, you'll see that we are making a new cut line. So instead of the cut line being here, it will be in a slightly different place on your customized pattern. Okay. So just transfer those measurements over and transfer all the dots and the darts and the markings, transfer that over, or just keep this taped. Use your pattern uh, making tape, your sewers fix it tape, and mm -hmm. tape that to the pattern and keep that close by. I think that would be a better option for me rather than transferring all of this information onto your new pattern. Mm -hmm. And I see that our patterns here look a little sturdier than my normal patterns that I cut out. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's because we apply that Pellon easy knit interfacing to the back. And it works uh, easier to handle the pattern mm -hmm. and to work with it and pivot it. It doesn't tear as easy. The tissue won't tear. And then you can use it over and over if this becomes your favorite tunic pattern. Now we'll alter the back. So we'll do the same thing to the back pattern piece that we did to the front. And the back looks very uh, similar to the front, only the back pattern piece doesn't have any welt pockets. Okay. However, it still has that side inset mm -hmm. with that detail on the back. It just um, is a wonderful designer technique that's easy to sew. But again, we tape it with with sewer's fix-it tape, we'll tape that inset to the back. That side inset is taped to the back pattern piece to give us that traditional shape of a back uh, dress pattern piece. And we know that we need to increase your bust line one inch because it needs a total of four inches and we have to subdivide that by four, four seams, seams to get one inch. Right, so we make that mark where that one increases, one inch increase, and then we pivot. So we place the pin one intersection behind at that shoulder seam, mm -hmm. where the shoulder meets the arm's eye, and then we pivot. We pivot that pattern to meet your increase, and then you'll draw that arm's eye. So pivot to the line, okay. and then draw the arm's eye from the shoulder down. Mm -hmm. We're increasing the bust line by doing that but we're not increasing the length of the arm's eye. Okay. So we know the sleeve will fit into that arm's eye. Mm -hmm. And then we know we need to move the pin to the alteration and then pivot back. So we'll pivot down to your half inch okay. marking in your hip line and meet that line. So we'll just I'll reach as far as we can reach there. And we'll move the pattern so you can see the alteration. We'll move it back to the original line. And we've increased the bust area and the hip area without changing the length of the seam. Very good. It's, it's a wonderful technique. And with this McCall 7871, it's great to show this because you don't always have patterns that are this shape and they have unique designs to them. And we want to use those fun patterns with all those uh, interesting details to them you'll notice that the beautiful front accent is continued onto the back. So we mm -hmm. have to do the same thing with this pattern piece 
that we did to the front. So you untape that, reposition it to your alteration, and mark the cutting line for the inset okay. on the, the back. I've really been looking forward to making this dress ever since we introduced the pattern. I love the variety of Ponte knits, and I'm looking forward to sewing this together. Well, your pattern is almost ready for you. You just have to cut it out and lay out your fabric. So next time we'll be stitching our knit dress. We've covered the basics of altering our McCall 7871 knit dress pattern with Nancy's right size fitting techniques. Reference Nancy's sewing collection book for all of Nancy's pivot and slide pattern fitting methods, including skirts, jackets, and pants. We hope you enjoyed the Stitches Sisters project. You'll find Nancy's Confident Sewing Collection book along with pattern fitting supplies at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again next time for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Riley Blake Designs, OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, and shopnzp.com. Bernina, made to create.